Right, welcome back to the channel guys. My first job of the day is going to be to have a look at what the electrician's done to my pipes. Apparently he's not actually said anything to the electrician, but the uh, Jordan said to me the electrician's gone through my pipe there, so I have to get this board up. I know the carpet fit was supposed to be in doing his underlay. I don't think he can lay the carpet because the skirting board's not glassed. But to be honest, it does annoy me when people don't say anything. I'm not bothered the fact that my pipe's been hit. I couldn't give a monkey's like he's already hit one over there. You know, accidents happen, just just say something, you know, don't wait for all the carpet and everything to go down. Because then obviously the ceiling's decorated downstairs as well. Luckily the heating was drained down, so obviously it's not done any it's not gone through the ceiling, but if I'd have filled back up straight through the ceiling, then you've got a problem, haven't you? Um but yeah, I don't I really don't care if people hit my pipes or or whatever, you know, accidents happen, but just say something. So what I'll do so I'll get this board up, take that gripper off, and we'll have a look at what's going on. I don't know, yeah, I might need both of them bits up to be fair, but yeah, we'll get that up um, and see if we can get it sorted. Get it screws. Pipe needs fixing. As if I'd have seen that, you know, the whole house, and if I'd have seen that on the floor, it's like ridiculous. Like, fair enough, write it on, but don't screw the board back down. <laughs> I don't even know if we can get it up now, the skirting's done, but we'll, uh, we'll have a look anyway. From both lot blinking now. That would have made a leak, wouldn't it? That would have caused a problem. To be fair, I haven't marked them. I think what I did there is I slid them across, save lifted all the boards up. So that's why they're not clipped in, not got no hair felt on. But I just slid them across because there's a steel, there's a steel there somewhere, I think. But yeah, could probably pop a bit of lagging on now the boards are up. But look at that lot. Nightmare. I'll get it sorted. Just have to cut a little bit more of this up so I can get in the pipe. I can't get the Milwaukee in there because it's like a, is that the steel? I think that is the steel, yeah. That's why I slid my pipes over the top. That's why I couldn't like that bit. I'll just get these cut out. So it's never an issue, just like if you hit my pipe, just say something, I can fix it. But if I'd filled it up, I wouldn't have it. Job once and uh, I accidentally drilled 
drilled a cable, I didn't know it was there. Anyway, obviously I had to get an electrician out from the, uh, well it was my brother actually. Got my brother out, he charged me 100 quid. I only took 40 quid for the job. So it cost me 60 quid to do the job. Absolute nightmare. Honestly, I just drilled straight into this wall and there was a cable going to the garage. I obviously didn't know it was there. Oops. Yeah, my brother came out and did it, charged me 100 quid, and he only, uh, only did 40 quid for the job. It's a hard lesson. That's typical of me though, stuff like that always happens. Before I've got nothing. <laughs> but, here's what it is. Bearing in mind I was only on, what was the on this time? Probably about £3 an hour. So 40 quid to me, well, 40 quid to me was a lot of money. More than the day's money. I'll do the title of the video, Plumber Gets His Revenge. Look. That's, my, that's, my, that's about as angry as I get that. Obviously, I'd never do anything like that. For a start, the cable might be live. But yeah, we just got that soldered back in. What I can do is pop some lagging on there now as well. So it gives me an opportunity to do that. That's why the pipes weren't marked. It's because I slid them I slid them through to be fair. But yeah, we'll get this floor put back down and nobody has to know then. But yeah, if people just say something like I've hit your pipes, I've had an accident, whatever, I can deal with it. But is it, if that had gone through the ceiling, I'd have been well, I'd have fixed it, but it obviously done damage. Right, I've just got this radiator to fit in here. This is the one that we had to add in as an extra. So the only way I could do this was to drill it through the wall at an angle. I did actually film all this, it's a video ages ago. And now that the joint has put a skirting on, we can get this one piped up. I've left this one till last because I wanted the skirting board on, otherwise it would have been a horrible finish. So all I'll do is use two elbows and they come into the valve. But yeah, this one, because these are attic trusses, we couldn't drill or notch any of this floor. So that was the only way I could get, I could get these pipes into this area. So with a bit of luck we've got them pipes set up dead dead in the right place, it should just be a case of two elbows into the valves. I've been doing all the radiators, 300mm to the bottom of the bracket so it lifts, it lifts it just above the skirting board and yeah that should be fine, it's worked out quite nicely. That's my first job, it's just finally centre. Four eighty, so it's going to be a little bit tight on our pipes, but four eighty is two forty. Just got the little. That's the centre of our rad brackets. I've been doing them all through the middle to the bottom. I will do the check on the rad. I know everybody does these slightly differently, but that's how I always do mine. Whatever works really. Put them on the narrower setting for the double rats. And what I'll do, I always just drill the top one. This 
screws that come with these uh, rads are actually pretty good. They're threaded all the way down, they give you a little wash out. So it's rare that they actually use screws to come with them. So brackets dead level, don't forget the little plastic. It just stops the rad from from creaking. So put all four of them on, they just sort of slide over the bracket and then we can hang the rad then. And that should be level. And then we just put the tails in, two solid elbows to get that piped up. So these are just EPH bags, they are biodirectional. It's typical when they start chasing out just as I uh, start recording. Hopefully you can hear me. Just locked out 55. About that much. I always jet below the top. It's not recommended by lock type, but that will never leak.
I always use that um, compression fit and spanner. They're only about five there, but it don't mark your um, chrome. Got to do the same on the other side, put the air taps in, and I'll whip the rad off um, for the decorate so you can get some this coat on. But yeah, easy as that. So they fall in quite nicely. There's nothing else I could do with them. I couldn't bring them any higher unless it went more down an angle where it's just been a right nightmare because there's a steel on the other side as well. I think that'll look fine. One good thing with these EPH valves is they do give you uh, brass nuts and olives as well as copper. So sometimes brass are better for heating and obviously copper you'd use on speed fit. So it's always handy to have a few olives kicking around anyway. So they're just the standard, well, sort of trade, trade TLV valves. They're not, not bad quality though, to be fair. EPH are becoming a decent, decent look brand. So that one's falling about right anyway. So yeah, that should look fine. I can put a couple of pipe collars on as well at the end just to tidy it up, but I couldn't do anything more with that radiator. That entire cylinder was full of lime. I tried to get it close to the skip. They are replacing all this driveway anyway, but I've got massive chunks out inside. I'll show you in a second, but I couldn't believe it. it must have been. That cylinder must have weighed 50 kilos. I could barely pick it up. Yeah, didn't quite get, didn't quite make it all the way to the skip before I managed to tip it over. But I've never seen one that full. Horrendous. But yeah, I just cut a hatch in it just to make it a bit lighter, but couldn't pick the damn thing up. Unreal that. Had to SDS chisel the line out of the cylinder. I've never seen one that I couldn't pick up. I couldn't even pick the cylinder up. I know I know I'm not particularly strong, but I can lift like a 57 kilo Worcester easy. And that cylinder weighed more than that. But I've never seen one that full of lime. But anyway, it's out of the way now. It's been in the way the whole job. I've been putting that on, putting that off. But it's in the back of the van and on the way to the scrappy now. Right, I'm just connecting the kitchen sink. Obviously, I've connected the hot and cold and everything up. I've had to put a blender underneath here to control the water temperature. It's uh, I've had to use the flexes as well, just because it's a monoblock tap and they come with them. And uh, to be honest, trying to get solid tails in can be a bit of a pain as well but it's come with the flexes so that's what i've used i've used the main lines on the bottom and they've just connected them in so it's fine what i've got is a dishwasher a dishwasher to connect up if i can get my words out these have got a check valve built in but i got picked up on an inspection because the ones with the check valve built in don't give double va double check valve protection so i just put a double check valve i always used to put a double check valve before any washing machine valve or dishwasher valve anyway but i just thought they would save a fitting but obviously if you can't use them well you can use them but you've still got to put a double check valve inside so there's no real no real point um just got the waste kit to do on that that bit's all done then but yeah this job is coming together i'm about knackered what time is it Not a bit of time left today um but yeah, just just knackered today. Whether the sun, I've been caught a little bit by the sun as well. I don't normally burn, but yeah, it's coming together. Thankfully, I've just got this bit to do. The soldering is rubbish on this as well. I don't look too clean. I can't find my heat mat anywhere, so I've just had to solder all well. There's a couple of snots on it, but I say the most important thing is it doesn't leak really. So I'm just going to get this washing machine bought in. I've got the the hoses are underneath, so I'll just drill them through the bottom of the unit, and then. Bring that in, bring that in down there. Well, I've just got the waste to connect up on that. I've put my trap and everything on. We've got, they've actually sent Howden's, have sent a double, a double one out. So I've blanked, well, I'll, I'll sort the blanks out. And then what I wanted you to say, do you ever struggle sometimes for, ins for inspiration? I'm normally not one of them. I mean, I love, absolutely love the job, but when you're under pressure, I've been under pressure the last few weeks, actually. Um, been under the cosh, as they say. Um, 
I just needed to be everywhere really and that's why I sort of apologise for the content being a little bit similar from week to week. I've got a lot of varied jobs on, but Harry's been on a job today which would have been interesting. It's an old galvanised iron water main, which that would have made a good 